this is a brief overview of my process for a couple design projects I did at uh, SRJC. I'm going to use uh, two examples to highlight some of the successes and pitfalls I experienced with each. Uh, in one, I stuck to the design process, and in another, I cut corners and mismanaged my time and made some mistakes early on that made the project suffer uh, a bit in the final iteration. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the thumbnails for these projects. Uh, it can't be overstated how important the thumbnailing step is in the scope of the design process. Uh, you're able to work out larger ideas in a short amount of time and churn out a larger number at the same time. Uh, this applies to whatever you're trying to design or visually create. Uh, as a hobby, I create comics and thumbnailing is integral to the workflow there. Uh, later in the video, I'll show you how to use thumbnails in the process for creating a comic book page. In my time in the graphic design program at SRJC, I feel I drew way too few thumbnails. Sometimes I might start with an idea of what the finished project might look like in my head, uh, and I'd put myself in a creative box. Case in point, uh, the seed packet project. I had what I felt was a strong idea of the illustrations I wanted to include. I think I sketched out these thumbnails in class super quick. Uh, side note, these are probably too tight for thumbnails. They really don't have to be this detailed at this stage. The error that I made may not be obvious yet, but I'll point it out when I show you the Illustrator file. I was hyper-focused on the illustration, and I didn't give enough consideration to the entire physical space that I was designing for. With the Certificate Ceremony Invitation project, I really didn't have a clear idea of what I wanted to do, which is freeing in a lot of ways at this stage. It gave me freedom to explore different ideas. Uh, the first set of thumbnails uh, were me just testing some thoughts. Uh, then I did some more research and I came back to the thumbnails fresh and played with a different concept. This one I ultimately took to the final design. I still think I could have drawn more thumbnails to expand on some of the themes I was using, but I did use this time effectively instead of rushing through, and it helped me lay the foundation that I built from. Here we are in Illustrator, and I will quickly go over the seed packet project. At this stage in the project, I've run low on time, and I've spent too much time illustrating in Photoshop, still too focused on an aspect of the design and not on the whole. I had the basic templates, the illustrations I was fairly happy with, a rough idea of how I was going to handle the layout and typography. My failure here is that I'm laying everything out in the template as though it's a two-dimensional design. I forgot to consider its finished form folded and glued. The parts that needed to be folded and glued together are overlapping, covering important information. Had I thumbnailed all of this from the start, I would have had a better idea of how all of my elements would fit together. If this were for a client and had gone to print like so, uh, you can imagine the consequences. All right, on to the invitation project. Uh, once I got to this stage, most of the design process was already done. Uh, it was really about putting everything in place and adjusting text and color relationships until it worked. Uh, it was all kind of done in the thumbnail stage, as uh, you can see. The central illustration was done using the pen tool. For the figure, I scanned in a quick sketch and placed it into Illustrator on its own layer and lowered the transparency and traced over it. Then I added and moved points around until I was happy with it. Fairly simple process since the figure doesn't have any curved anchor points. It's just straight lines and points. Um, mind you, the colors were already kind of chosen for us, basically. Uh, in our design brief for the project, we were told to use the school colors, blue, red, white, and they gave us specific spot color notes on each. But when they gave us the image file, of the badge element, it had this teal color. I took some creative liberties and chose to use it as a primary color as a light mid-tone throughout the design. I kept all the typography the same typeface uh, to help reinforce rhythm. Ultimately, they chose my design to use as their poster to advertise the certificate ceremony event. Uh, the caveat was that my job wasn't done yet. The design was brought to a committee who would make suggestions and request changes. 
uh, the process wasn't too painful. The original design was meant to be a 5x7 postcard and they needed to be poster size, so that was, that was fine. Uh, there was one suggestion that they made that I didn't agree with. Uh, they wanted me to add a male figure next to the woman I had in the design. I felt that in doing so, it kind of changed the story the design was communicating, possibly some problematic messaging. Uh, once I explained my reasoning for a solitary figure, they were fine leaving it as it was. Here are a couple pages for a comic I worked on. I'll show you the thumbnails and how I use those in the workflow. And here are the thumbnails for those pages. I'll start with the scripts and in the thumbnails work out the composition and how to tell the story. Uh, the rule of thumb no pun intended, uh, of thumbnails is if it works this small uh, and it reads, then it will work much larger. A lot of what making comics is is graphic design, basically. And here is the digital working file in Clip Studio Paint. Let me turn up the opacity on the thumbnail. Uh, I bring in the thumbnail by scanning in the page, or in this case, I think I took a phone picture and then just imported the phone picture and blew it up, um, blew the thumbnail up, at which stage I will make selections and move panels around until I'm happy with the composition, and then lower the transparency, uh, start a new layer, and then work pencils over the top of that in a separate layer and then uh, move on to inking, which is, I think, the most fun. And then after that, it's lettering and panel borders. And that's pretty much a finished page. If I do color a page, I typically export the file over to Photoshop. It's just where I'm more comfortable working. Uh, this page ultimately didn't get colored yet. And here is the finished comic. I'm pretty proud of how it turned out. Um, I actually kind of like the way it looks just in black and white. I've colored comics in the past. Um, it takes a long time to do, so black and white is very nice for my schedule. But I did color the cover of this comic. That's all I have for this video. I hope it helped to see uh, part of my process and to see an example of what I would consider a failed design and one that I was ultimately pretty proud of. Thank you. Uh, until next time. Thank you.